Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Today we're doing a, sort of a re-look a re at something. Uh, a while back I've done a couple of videos on Black Rifle Arms. Black Rifle Arms is a company out of Florida, uh, run by a gentleman named Charlie Castles, who basically has developed uh, his own external piston versions of the rifle. And the first time I looked at it was a 5.56, uh, and it was very, very impressive uh, being able to adjust them uh, with, with the four positions. Um, you have an adjustable gas system on the front where basically all you got to do is pull and rotate. You have a uh, suppressed, you have a a standard position you have for light position and you have an off position uh, so you do have four adjustable positions on here um, and it's simple stupid it's not like a fully adjustable gas system where any one of these adjustments is going to throw your gun off so it's not going to not going to function with or without a suppressor uh, his system was very well thought out uh, i was very very impressed with it uh, so the next time i said i want to try one of your 760 by 39s which you'll see that upper receiver right here well, yep, that that went out, and uh, we did a lot of work on that uh, to basically build the ideal five, uh, ideal AR-15 external piston gun that would uh, take a 762 by 39 and that was basically what this lower was. And we have a video on that as well. Uh, it's on the CAP 762 by 39 but it's also on building an ideal um, AR-type rifle in 762 by 39 well, I had talked to Charlie, and I had said that yeah, there was, there was, I really liked his system, but there was a couple of things that I would change about it. And the first thing I wanted to have him change was if you if you take a look at the front sight base on here, you'll see this is held on with two screws. Now, those of you who follow me, you know that uh, I'm a stickler for uh, drill and pinned gas blocks, especially when it comes to external pistons because you have you know an operating rod moving back and forth in there. The other thing that I didn't particularly care about uh, was the way uh, you had your adjustments. Your adjustments on here, they did not have any way to identify which one that it was. So you really had to look to see which position that you were on. So I said to him, you know, uh, the two changes that I would make, I would have you drill and pin your front sight base, uh, your gas block, put some kind of a marking on your regulator to show you what position that you're in. Well, the upper receiver we have here is basically he did both things that I asked. And uh, I was extremely impressed. Taking a closer look in here, you can see we have drilled and pen. He uses a spring pen versus taper pens. Quite frankly, uh, taper pens don't doesn't matter whether you use a spring pen or a taper pen. Uh, you know, HK uses spring pens. Many, com many companies do it. Does not make any difference for as far as as the quality. It's drilled and it's it's pinned in place. This is not going anywhere. And if you take a look at the gas valve, there's a dot right here. You can see position one. Then you can see the, when you go to the right, you're on position three. So you have you know you have dots here. So now we actually know what position that we're in. So these were the two things that I was very very uh, adamant on, and he did change. And you can also tell uh, from the initial one we had a Troy system on there that was a unique Troy uh, handguard. This one we're now at M lock. So we're now going into the, to the current age where we're looking at M-Lock instead of 1913 rails. Uh, again, we have rail segments on here, but we no longer have the standard 1913 rails. So we just did, uh, we just want to take a look at this one again, and we did uh, suppress as well. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what this system is. So basically you have a gas system that is pulling you pull from the front. And you can see it comes out as one assembly. It's held in by a, a detent with a locking screw. The locking screw locks right into this position you can see right here. Once it's locked into place, basically by pulling outward, you can adjust your gas positions. And we can see right here the, the different gas ports. You get small, larger, larger, and smaller again. So we have different gas settings depending on whether it's suppressed, unsuppressed, whether you're using um, ammunition that's not military spec or it's underpowered so lets more gas in, or if you're just uh, going to be shooting a mil spec, you have a gas port for that as well. So basically we have a stainless steel operad, and we have our piston, and then we have our gas regulator. Very, very simple system. The front sight base, as you can see, has a 1913 rail on top. We just have a Magpul MBUS Pro on the top. This particular one has a uh, Magpul Mo handguard on it, where this one here has a Troy uh, M-Lock handguard on it. Upper receiver is a standard mil spec, uh, AR-15 M16 type upper receiver, flat top upper receiver. We have a mag pull backup sight on the on the rear here and a loop pulled uh, red dot. Next thing I want to talk about is the boat carrier because the boat carrier is rather interesting as well. Again, this is uh, Charlie's own boat carrier group. We can see we have nickel boron finish on here. We have the tombstone. It's one piece, but the back is what's really interesting. The back is a polymer, bu uh, basically a polymer bumper. What this does is when it hit, when it you're in recoil and it hits back, this absorbs some of that shock. 
this absorbs some of that recoil uh, when it when it strikes. Uh, and also with that lubricity you have on there, it slides a little bit easier in the receiver extension. But with that, it really does. You can feel a difference in the recoil uh, by by having this in the back here. He, he offers this in both the internal piston as well as external piston version. So if you guys have a standard AR15 uh, that's using um, I, again, I hate using the term direct gas because it's wrong. An internal piston, he has one of these that has this on here as well uh, for that. This is removable. You can replace them if you ever needed to. However, according to Charlie, uh, he's got thousands and thousands of rounds through these carriers and he's never had to replace one, but this can be replaced if need be. Standard mil spec bolt, Carpenter 158. Now the 760 by 39 if you go back to that video, you're going to see that there's some specific differences between that bolt and anybody else's bolt and the firing pin. He has a specific 760 by 39 firing pin and his bolt, his extractor has some modifications over any, what anybody else does and in some of the geometry of his locking lugs. So he's done some things that are different. These are not standard bolts. These are his bolts that are made to his prints. Uh, just like the carrier, this is all made to his prints. So this is probably one of the most interesting uh, patented systems that he has. Is you can see the patent number on the top of the carrier, on the side on the top of the carrier. Um, you can see this is a really interesting idea. It's a really interesting concept, and I have to say that it does work. Um, I've tested it in both uh, internal piston and external piston, 762 by 39 as well as 556. So we're talking about the lower receiver that we have here. Now the lower receiver we have on here is one that I built around the 762 by 39. So this takes a standard 5.56 or a standard AR-15 type receiver, and of course the 762 by 39 takes uh, the AR-15 type 7.62 by 39 millimeter magazines. We only use the C Products Defense magazines in 7.62 by 39. So take a look at the lower receiver. One of the things that uh, I did with this, when you're having an external piston system in a AR-15 type uh, rifle, basically what you have is an operating rod. Basically you have an operating rod that's striking this carrier key and it's causing it to tilt because it's getting slightly off center. So the ass end of the carrier is starting to go downwards. Now, if you had a standard carrier with a, it was fully steel, that's basically going to hit on the bottom of the receiver extension, and eventually that's going to start wearing. And I've actually seen ones that were, that were tested, that were never changed out, and there was nothing that was done using standard rear ends on the carrier. And basically, I've seen them nearly cut through uh, the receiver extension. So again, this is what we refer to as carrier tilt. This is something that happens when you use a uh, short stroke tappet, meaning you have an operating rod that's striking and driving it back. The long stroke is not as much of a problem uh, as it is with the short stroke tap, but again, you're, you're, you're striking, can you ass down rearward. So what we've done to prevent any issues with that, the, the receiver extension was changed on here to the primary weapon systems one, which as you can see, the receiver extension extends past the buffer retainer pin. What that means is when the receiver closes, the ass end of the carrier is inside of the receiver extension. So it has no opportunity for it to tilt. So this is, I thought was a major enhancement for any kind of an external piston uh, type system that goes on an AR-15 M16 that uses a short stroke tappet. This is one way of preventing carrier tilt by already having the asset of the carrier in the receiver extension at the moment that it starts to move rearward. So that was sort of a, that was sort of a big deal. Now the buffer that we use in here is a primary weapon systems H2 buffer. Now. H2 buffers are mostly used with external pistons because of the way the opening stroke is. The opening stroke on an external piston is extremely, it's extremely rough. Uh, it's a lot more violent than that of the standard internal piston. So what's happening is, is when, you're, when it strikes in, you're getting damage to your upper receiver because the cam pin is going into the, uh, into the cam slot and it's digging into the upper receiver. And it's just, it's a more violent action. So what the heavier buffer does is it slows down that action just a little bit longer and it helps prevent some of that damage or prolong uh, that particular kind of damage. So we're using an H2 buffer along with that. The other thing that we did with this, uh, again, this was primarily designed around the 762 by 39 was the hammer spring that we have on here was also by Black Rifle Arms. It was a heavier um, hammer spring and that's necessary for 762 by 39 ammunition when you're firing the Russian ammunition that has a much harder primers. You need a little bit heavier of a strike on there. We also have a forward control design uh, bolt catch on here. Other than that, it's pretty much standard. Again, you guys know me if I always put the Magpul Mayan pistol grips on there. So the way this is set up, this is ideal for both the 5.56 as well as the 762 by 39 receivers. So the way this is set up, whether you're using 5.56 or 762 by 39 this is perfect. You have a little bit extra weight on the hammer, but again, it doesn't really affect you anything with the 5.56. 
So overall, the system uh, is excellent. Uh, this time when we took it out, we did a lot more suppressed shooting with it because, again, we have a, a system where we can adjust the gas system for a sound suppressor. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the range. We're going to see how both of these shoot. Gecko ammunition with this particular rifle, we're going to have to adjust the gas valve to allow for more gas to, to uh, come in because it is a lighter round. The ammunition that we're going to try now is also Gecko, and we're going to leave the gas setting in the normal position, uh, but we're going to see it's definitely a lot less recoil than you would see with the Russian ammunition.
Well, the, some of the videos you're seeing, the, some of the first videos you're going to see from the first uh, Caps rifle that we shot, and that was one that had the Troy handguards on it, which had you know their their original uh, you know original screwed on front sight base. It was pre the changes. Uh, and then you're going to see me using this one here, which is the, the modified one uh, that, that had all the changes that I requested on it. And the reliability was stellar. Uh, we had no issues at all. We were able to adjust the gas valve uh, with the suppressor. Um, you know, the, the gas system is pretty over-gassed on here. Your gas port's pretty wide on this thing, so you still get a little bit of extra gas, but you get enough taken down so you don't have any extraction issues at all. So the next set of videos you're going to see is the 762 by 39 uh, This you guys have mostly seen before uh, on the other video, but again, I always like the opportunity to, to mess around with this one. The only issue that we really had with this one here was uh, with a specific kind of ammunition. Um, Norma ammunition, Gecko ammunition, it's a brass case 762 by 39 And it is to a very low uh, port pressure compared to the Russian ammunition and other American-made ammunition. Um, we see this with mostly with the AR type rifles. Uh, I, had this, I had this ammunition in a uh, primary weapon systems, one of their uh, um, Mark 116s, and uh, the, the 116 also had had problems firing this ammunition unless it was suppressed. Once you put the suppressor on there, they would fire the Gecko ammunition all day long, but uh, it was just that specific kind of ammunition that gave us a little bit of trouble. So overall, looking at the system, uh, this is an excellent system. It's very well thought out. Uh, it's very uh, easily easy to use. Uh, coming apart for, for cleaning is generally pretty easy. Uh, you will have, sometimes you'll get some uh, carbon freeze on here, so it may take some while sometimes to get this out because you will get some of that carbon freeze on there. But other than that, it's very easy to maintain. comes out from the front. You don't ever have to remove your handguard. Uh, for as far as ammunition is concerned with the 5.56, as you saw from the group that we had, it shoots very, very well. Um, you know, we shot at 75 yards. We didn't go out to the full 100 yards. Uh, again, this is not, you know, it's not a precision rifle, but uh, the group was sub MOA at 75 yards, so pretty happy with that. Uh, and I believe that was the Mark 262 uh, Black Hill 77 grain OTM. But uh, overall, I think the overall design is excellent. Now, at the same time he, I, I was sent this system to look at, I was sent another one of his systems. Uh, this particular system is his 308. Uh, unfortunately, the receivers that I have here are all the SR25 type based receivers. This takes an aero precision type lower receiver. I was supposed to have one sent to me, but unfortunately it did not get here in time for me to be able to test it. But again, this is the same type of a cap system. This one just a little bit differently. This one here you pull out and you use a, uh, a 308 cartridge. Uh, the, the, you stick the neck in there, you, can, you pull out and you can and you rotate it. So it's, a, it's the same type, but it, uh, instead of having the cap system where you have the pulling it out by, by your fingers. This enables you to use a cartridge case to do it. This is a little bit better of a design because if you have to adjust that when it's, when uh, you're firing, that sucker gets hot. So you're going to have a hard time utilizing it. Where with this one here, this is going to be a lot better to use when it's hot. We had this set up for a sound suppressor as well. But if you look at it, basically it's the same thing. You have a, a monster bolt carrier group for 308 and you also have the bumper on the back of that. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to get an opportunity to shoot this one yet. Uh, I do hope to in the future. But uh, this was a new, this was a product that uh, it's very very new to me. But you're seeing he does have the he does uh, diversify. He does make different calibers. This is a pretty interesting system too. So when you see how this this fits in, basically you you line it up and you take out your pin. You drive it into place, and it taps right into place. So overall, you know, as you guys know, I'm not really an external piston fan in an AR platform. I've had an opportunity to fire a lot of different ones, you know, HK, Caracal, um, you know, there's, there's there's several different ones that are out there. And I have to say, I would rate this up there with all of them uh, for as far as its uh, longevity, its durability, its reliability. It hasn't seen military service yet, of course, but, uh, you know, it's not had the opportunity. But I believe the way that this, the design is, I believe there's a lot of technical merit in it. I believe that it's very well made. With the changes that he's made on it, he's basically made this uh, military grade for as far as I'm concerned with having the drilling and pinning of the, of the front sight uh, front sight or gas block. This this thing could be tested for military use and uh, maybe one day that it will. But um, if you guys are interested in uh, this specific system, you will go right to Black Rifle Arms website. He sells them direct. I don't believe he goes through distribution at all. all the, also, you guys who are using 760 by 39 versions of this rifle, he sells those firing pins over there as well. So you can get a proper firing pin for that caliber. 
Now, for as far as the maintenance of this is concerned, if you go to, uh, to Otis's Otis Defense, there's a specific kit. It's called the MPSR 556, which is an ideal cleaning kit for this rifle as well. It has all the tools necessary, minus the bone tool, which because you don't need a bone tool with an external piston. Uh, there's one both in 556 that you could use a 308 or an AK-47 cleaning kit for um, the 762 by 39 so I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share.